All right, we want to take a closer look now at the suspect's Russia connection. And for that, we turn to Phil Black, who joins us from CNN Moscow. So, Phil, what more are you learning from there on this, this connection to Russia? Well, Rosemary, the Russian officials here are still being maintaining really a very strict silence. The key questions are the same as they have been for some days now and that is precisely what did Russia know at the time uh, that it asked the FBI to first look into Tamerlan Tsarnaev back in early 2011 as as we've just been hearing. We know from the FBI that they made the Russian authorities made the request. The FBI said they investigated thoroughly, found no information, went back to the Russians and asked more questions. We've heard from some US officials who say they sent three requests back to the Russian side asking for further information because the information they had been given was very thin, vague uh, and non-specific. So far we have not heard any uh, elaboration on that publicly uh, from the Russian side. Both US officials here and Russia say they are cooperating uh, very closely. We know that a, a US embassy uh, official has traveled to Dagestan to interview the parents uh, of the bombing suspects. We believe that interview took place just yesterday uh, and the expectation now is that one or both of those parents will travel to the United States. Rosemary. Yeah and Phil, if Russia was so concerned about the suspect, why would it not have continued and pursued its investigation more thoroughly perhaps so that it could hand over more to US authorities? It is difficult to assess that, Rosemary, because of the very strict silence that the Russian authorities uh, are, man are maintaining. Presumably, he showed up on their radar for some reason, either under direct surveillance, perhaps during an earlier visit to Dagestan, or perhaps uh, while they were monitoring online activities. But at the time that they asked the Americans to help, he was obviously already back in the United States by that point. The key question, as I say, is what did they have on him? Did they have anything more than the vague information they provided the United States with? And if they did have more than that uh, available information, why did they not share it uh, with the U.S. authorities? It is said that there is still some degree of suspicion between U.S. and Russian law enforcement and intelligence officials that obviously goes back to the Cold War uh, and beyond. But Russia has always been a country that talks up the importance of maintaining international cooperation and particularly in dealing with the terrorist threat uh, and Russia has always talked about the significant terror threat that it believes exists within this North Caucasus region and has often expressed some frustration that the international community has not uh, showed as much sympathy for Russia as it tries to deal with, with what it believes is a very ongoing threat uh, to its own national security uh, and presumably I think we're going to hear a little bit more about this in the, in the next few days or so. The Russian leadership very keen to make the point that uh, we believe this has been a threat for some time and the international community has not always taken us as seriously as perhaps they should have. Rosemary. And Phil of course uh, you mentioned that uh, President Putin will be uh, holding a news conference uh, very soon in fact. How is he likely to deal with this? Vladimir Putin will today hold another one of his annual question and answer sessions. It has become an almost annual event uh, to be televised in this country for the time that he has been dominating politics here. This will be the 11th one he has held. He held them through his initial eight years as president, four years as prime minister, and this will be the first one that he has held since he returned to the presidency again early next year. They are big, long sessions that can run for four to five hours, covering questions on all aspects of Russian life, society and politics. And security within the North Caucasus usually comes up uh, at some point. So I think it is very likely we will hear some comment from him on this today. But again, I think the question is how specific will he be? I think he will talk about the threat of terrorism, the need to uh, cooperate internationally. But what we'll be listening for is if he gives any specific information on this case and specifically what the Russians knew about Tamerlan Tsarnaev.